Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about abdominal muscles. So we have four muscles of the abdomen, four abdominal muscles. The deepest of the four is transverse abdominis. Uh, so really its action is to compress the, abdo the abdomen. I almost said compress the abdominal, but <laughs> to compress the abdomen. So it contracts to act as sort of a girdle to hold in and contain all of our visceral organs. Um, so when we finish, when I go through all of these muscles here, I'm gonna draw a little picture and try to help you conceptualize where all these muscles are in relation to one another. Um, so it says the insertion, the abdominal aponeurosis to the linea alba. So an aponeurosis is like a big sheet-like tendon. So it's like a big sheet of tendon, like what we see in that picture on the left there. Uh, so the transverse abdominis muscle is the red part on the side. So it's a very lateral muscle. And then it's inserting into that white part, that's the abdominal aponeurosis. And the linea alba is a line right down the center of the abdomen. Um, so the abdominal aponeurosis actually is in two layers. There's the deep layer and the superficial layer. And they're both anchored together by the linea alba. It's like a tendon right in the center of that abdominal aponeurosis. So transverse abdominis is inserting into the deep layer of the abdominal aponeurosis. Okay, and again, I'll draw a picture when we get done here um, that hopefully will help this all make sense. Okay, and then rectus abdominis, that's the six pack muscle right in the center, uh, flexes the vertebral column and like all of our abdominals, helps compress the abdomen to aid in defecation, urination, forced expiration as in forced exhalation. Uh, and childbirth. Um, so it's the one right in the center there. The linea alba, uh, the, the tendon right in the center of um, the abdomen, is what is drawing that line right in the center of rectus abdominis and separating left and right. Um, so rectus abdominis, the belly of the muscle, is sandwiched between the superficial and the deep layers of um, the abdominal aponeurosis that I mentioned just a minute ago. Okay, so the deep layer, it goes abdominal aponeurosis and then transverse abdominis lateral to it. Then we have rectus abdominis that is lying on top of that deep layer of the abdominal aponeurosis. And then superficial to that laying on top of rectus abdominis is the superficial layer of the abdominal aponeurosis. Okay, so at internal oblique, that's our next layer. So laying superficial to rectus abdominis, we have the, um, my gosh, <laughs> we have the, the superficial layer of the abdominal aponeurosis laying lateral to rectus abdominis in the same middle layer, lateral to rectus abdominis is internal oblique. Okay, so internal oblique is sandwiched between transverse abdominis, which is deep to it, and external oblique, which is superficial to it. Okay, so um, external, or sorry, internal oblique, the fibers are going in this direction. Let's say the belly button is here, fibers are going up in this direction, angled upward internal oblique. So because the, the fibers are angled upward, they laterally flex the vertebral column, both obliques do. They rotate the vertebral column to the same side, which is unique to internal oblique, compresses the abdomen like all of the abdominals do, and flexes the vertebral column. Okay, so because the fibers are angled upward, when the origin and insertion get closer together, they're going to rotate the vertebral column to that same side. Compared to external oblique, the fibers go in the opposite direction. And those fibers, if these contract, it's gonna rotate me to the opposite side. Okay, internal oblique, same side. External oblique, opposite side. Okay, I hope that 
made sense. <laughs> I'm going to keep moving here. We'll talk about external oblique and hopefully this will make sense. Okay, external oblique is the most superficial layer of our abdominal muscles. We have the superficial abdominal aponeurosis in the center that's superficial to rectus abdominis. And then we move lateral to that and we get to external oblique, which is lying superficial to internal oblique. Um, if you wanna remember which direction the fibers go in the external oblique compared to internal, external oblique, fibers go hands in the pockets. Like if you're wearing a coat and you put your hands in the pockets, they're going down at that angle. That is the direction of the fibers of external oblique. Internal oblique are just opposite to that. They're perpendicular to that at an angle upward towards the belly button. Okay, so we are gonna have the same list of actions here as with internal oblique, except that it rotates the vertebral column to the opposite side. Okay, so if I'm doing lateral flexion at the lumbar level, that lateral flexion is going to be both internal and external oblique on that side of the flexion. Okay, so let's say I hold a dumbbell in my left hand and I let it hang at my side, and then I laterally flex to the right side. I am using my right internal and external oblique to flex against the weight of the dumbbell in my other hand. Okay, so they're working together in lateral flexion to that side. In rotation, so if I'm doing a, any kind of twisting, any kind of rotating in the lumbar spine, we have the internal and external obliques working opposite one another. So both muscles are working but they're working on the opposite sides as each other. Okay, so let's say I'm rotating to the right side. Okay, external oblique rotates the vertebral column to the opposite side. So that means my left external oblique is contracting to turn me right. But meanwhile, my right internal oblique is also contracting to turn me to the right. Okay, so if I'm turning right, it's my right internal oblique and left external oblique that are working together to do that. If I'm turning left, then it's going to be my left internal oblique and my right external oblique that work together to turn me to the left side. Okay, so I hope that made sense. If anyone is confused about that, I'd be happy to talk about that more uh, when we do our live lectures or when we see each other in person. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna stop sharing here and I'm gonna hop over to a whiteboard and help you understand better the layers. Okay, so I hope you can see my whiteboard here. Um, drawing. All right, so our abdominal muscles are in three layers, the deepest, we have, there's the linea alba, it's not a very good uh, linea alba. Okay, and then projecting from that, whoops, that didn't come out very good, let me erase that. Okay, projecting from that is, the deep layer of the abdominal aponeurosis. Okay, so right now we're just looking at the linea alba down the center, and then the deep layer of the abdominal aponeurosis that is projecting off of that. Okay, then, I wonder if we have different colors here, if this is it, I think that's it. Um, then coming off of that laterally, this, is transverse abdominis. Okay, so on both sides, transverse abdominis. Transverse abdominis, the fibers going in the lateral direction. Okay, and I'm gonna label that so we know. I'll just label it transverse abdominis. <laughs> Sorry, it's so messy. <laughs> All right, then on the medial layer, or the middle layer, I suppose we should say, on the middle layer, 
So the layer is superficial to this deep layer. Now we have rectus abdominis right here. Okay, so rectus abdominis is split down the middle by the linea alba, and then it also has these tendons that are in the, in the middle of the muscle that separate it into these segments, and the fibers are all going this way. Okay, so that's in the middle layer that is superficial to uh, the deep layer of the abdominal aponeurosis. Okay, then lateral to that, coming off of the sides here, going downward at an angle like that, that is our internal oblique that has fibers going up in this direction. Okay, so rectus abdominis and internal oblique are the two muscles sharing that middle layer of our abdominals. Okay, then the most superficial layer we have anchored again at the linea alba in the center. And then we have the superficial layer here of the abdominal aponeurosis coming off of the linea alba. Okay, so rectus abdominis is sandwiched between the deep and the superficial layers of that abdominal aponeurosis. And then projecting off the sides here laterally of that superficial layer. Here we go. Oops, sorry. I'm going to erase that one. So it's projecting here laterally from that superficial layer of the abdominal aponeurosis that is external oblique with fibers going down like if we put our hands in the pockets of our overcoat it's external oblique going that way okay so in our deepest layer it is just the deep layer of the abdominal aponeurosis and then transverse abdominis on the lateral sides in the middle layer, it's rectus abdominis right in the center, and then internal oblique lateral to that. And then in the superficial layer, it's the superficial layer of the abdominal aponeurosis in the center, and then external oblique off on the lateral side. So up here, where we have the top of external oblique, it actually interdigitates, that's what we call it, with another muscle, serratus anterior, it looks like that. <laughs> okay, so it does this, it has a serrated edge. That's where it gets its name, serratus anterior. It has this serrated edge where it interdigitates, it goes like this with external oblique that's also got that sort of serrated edge in the top part there. So when someone is very muscular and doesn't have a lot of body fat, and you can kind of see that little zigzag up at their rib cage up there you're actually seeing where external oblique is interdigitating with serratus anterior. Okay, so I hope that helped clarify. I hope you're very clear on the layers of the abdominals and their actions. Um, but again, if you have questions about any of this or need more clarification, I am very happy to go into as much detail and go over this as many times as we need. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next one.